anniversary or graduation, there is that perfect gift that you have to shop for. It is right here in the size, color, and style that you want to take it home and then wrap it up for that uh, occasion coming up uh, two, two days, two weeks, or two months from now. You'll be ready. These are not available at department stores. The quality is high. The price is low. We don't have to pay more rents, and it helps the local fundraising. Now, let's take a step back to World War II. Look rolling to the left. Our pilot is Bill Lemp. That's L-E-F-F. He is in the first place to make it. Now, we'll give you a little bit of living history about training in World War II. It came in three factors that built in the putting role on takeoff. First, in World War II, to train the 186,000 crew members, you first had to train a man how to fly an airplane. You had to solo him. That was done in a PT airplane, a primary trainer. Now, once he soloed, you got him into a more complex airplane, a little more things to move around, and that was the BT, or basic trainer. And before you released him into his bomber, or transport, or fighter, the Allied nations put him in this airplane. It is the North American Aviation for Advanced Trainer 6, built by the North American Aviation Company, the same one that built the B-51 Red Tail that you saw, the and and so the content of this airplane as a trainer was much like the bomber and the fighter. And the controls on the airplane, it had flaps, it had retractable landing gear like a fighter, it had a big 600 horsepower engine, it had the control in the field of a fighter, it had torque, it had a controllable pitch prop. And even it was built so that you could use it as not only a trainer, but in some of the smaller countries like the banana pump, Banana Republics actually use this as a trainer at peace time and as a light fighter attack aircraft during wartime. 15,000 plus of these aircraft were built. First one came off the assembly line in 1938. The last one came off the assembly line in 1945. And that means every one of these airplanes are either 66 to 73 years old. Now Bill Webb, as a kid, lived in the same neighborhood as the Wright brothers where they grew up. He was influenced in Dayton, Ohio, a big aviation town, by what the Wright brothers had accomplished, by what was going on out of the Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and a great group of barnstormers from the Moraine Air Park in Dayton, Ohio. When other kids were spending their money on candy and toys, this man with his paper route was saving every dime for flying lessons, and man did it pay off. He also lit up the nighttime sky last night. Now this is a 5,000 pound airplane. It is no docile little drone. But it makes the airplane do a little dance around. Now when the Air Force was born, they dropped the A portion of the AT, the advanced trainer, and they merely designated this the T-6. They call it the Texan because many of them were built in Dallas, Texas. The Navy had the same type of airplane that Bill was flying. They called it the SNJ. Different designations for the same airplane. As Bill rolls the aircraft around, the Canadians and the British used the airplane to train their pilots. They called them the Harvard, named after that learning institution, since it was an instructional aircraft, since it was a trainer. Moving this older aircraft around at its weight. It's not easy. And there will be times when Bill Webb will have to move the control stick with both hands and stand on the rudder pedal as he does the heavy I've heard a great story about Bill Webb. He's been doing this for over 35 years. He was inspired as a kid. During the week, he has a long career as a corporate pilot, trying to be executive guests around the world. He has been an airline flight instructor. He has been an airline pilot. He has been an air show pilot for 35 years. And he has a twin engine airplane based outside of Dayton, Ohio, that they fill up with test gear. And he does actual in-flight testing for the companies that provide equipment for the military that are based around. They go up and build twin engine airplanes that are subject to heat, vibration, or cold and altitude to see if they can withstand that type of process. 
because they will eventually be put in transport on fighter aircraft. They'll have to the mission to fly those bomb stormers move. Now I want to tell you a great story about Bill Left as he dances this aging gal around, this heavy aircraft. The high energy turn. You'll hear that if you can't turn tight, you can't fight in a dog fight. Bill Left is a in air racing style. And by the way, these aircraft are raced out of the Reno National Championship Air Race in September, Reno, Nevada. There is a class of racing for these type of aircraft exclusively. The 86 SNJ and hybrid aircraft, six to eight races at 50 feet above the ground, go around a four mile course and try to see which one will be across the start finish pylon and get the checker flag first. Their speed are somehow getting up to 230 miles an hour in an airplane that was never meant to go quite that fast. But here's the story I want to tell you about Bill Left, the man right here. A couple of years ago, there was a show in Illinois, and right after that show, we were all going up to the big show at the EAA convention in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Bill was going to be one of the featured performers. He left his show in Illinois and was ferrying up to Oshkosh. He got to a town about 20 miles south of Oshkosh called Fond du Lac. They have an airport there. It's over a highway.